What up guys, I'm with Mark Bell, one of my biggest business mentors, friends, idols, and we're here to check out his gym and give a gym tour. But what's different about his gym is that it's actually a compound. So I think you guys are in for a treat because you'll be able to see how a fitness mogul is able to do his entire operation. Let's check it out. Locked out of our own place. <laughs> There Thank you, you. So when we first come in here, we see a bunch of magazine covers, but some people might not even know that this is your magazine. Yeah, I had a magazine uh, for about five years. My wife and I did Power Magazine, and these are some of the men and women that have been on the cover. I remember me and Gio being on the cover. I was like, oh, this is cool, because I don't know when I'm ever going to be on another yeah. magazine. <laughs> this guy is the second slingshot ever. That you ever made? That I ever made, so yeah. we, we memorialized it, put it up there. Yeah, so a lot of people don't know, um, aside from being an awesome people's coach, uh, you're an inventor of a piece of equipment that helps mm -hmm. people through injury or really want to overload some of their bench. How did you come to this idea of creating the slingshot? I got hurt. I tore my pec a couple times, and uh, I think it was like time number three that I yeah. tore my pec that I started to think about like how can people train through and around their injuries and what could I do to I don't know, protect people on a bench press. And the slingshot just kind of by accident works on bench press, push-ups, and dips. I'll show you show it to you guys. Yeah. This entire place is uh, is built off of the slingshot. So being able to afford this entire place, the gym is actually free. Super training gym is free. 855 Riverside Parkway. Anybody ever wants to come in, the gym's Free, there's no. Uh, you get a ton of Asians coming in here now. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> there's uh, there's there's no strings attached to any of that. It, it is actually free, so just uh, hit us up on Instagram and you can come in for free. How big is your compound? Uh, this place is like about twenty five thousand square feet, twenty three thousand square feet, something like that. That's sick. So most of your stuff I notice is geared to helping people lift, either mm -hmm. supporting their lifts, keeping them safe. Like, what are some of the main products that you guys carry here? We have uh, knee sleeves, elbow sleeves, wrist wraps. We cover you basically head to toe. It's been a dream of mine since I started the business was to be able to cover people head to toe. And I actually ended up doing some work with Reebok where we actually made a powerlifting shoe for a while. So I was able to kind of complete that mission, but knee wraps, uh, just basically anything to make fitness easier. There's a lot of products that make fitness more intense or make things harder, but I was always trying to lower the barrier of entry into fitness because it is difficult and yeah. it does hurt. And once people are in pain, they get kind of grumpy, frustrated, they fall off, they don't train anymore. So I was just like, let me figure out ways to make people's elbows feel better. Let me find ways to make people's knees feel better, their shoulders feel better, so they can continue their fitness, so they can stay consistent with it. We got a bunch of different stuff. We got our slingshots right here. This was the product we were just talking to you guys about. The slingshot uh, works for push-ups, bench press, dips, things like that. And then there's some variations of the slingshot. There's different strengths. This is a- uh, Like a lighter. Yeah, this is a lighter one. It's called a reactive slingshot. This is the original slingshot. This is the first one that I created. And then there's one with an angled sleeve. And then there's one that's like a lot stronger for the bros that want to bench, you know, 500 pounds and stuff like that. And then this is a slingshot push-up which helps people with their push-ups. Uh, a lot of people struggle with push-ups. So this one just has double the material on the, ins on the uh, inner part here, which gives you a little bit more support for push-ups. Uh, if we come over here, we got a little bit of apparel. We got some stuff over here, some shirts, some shorts, some sweatshirts. We got hats, we got socks, we got all kinds of shit. And then over here, we have hip circles. Um, this product right here, this guy, pew. <laughs> <laughs> the hip circle is uh, a product that you've seen knocked off by every single company uh, that exists in fitness, but I created that. I created the whole space. You guys can thank me later for girls having big asses on Instagram. I basically created that because I created this product and it helps make your ass How bigger. do you feel about people knocking it off? Has it like, does I it feel, feel great. weird? No, I feel great. It feels, it feels, yeah, it's okay. I look at it more of a positive. You know, everything is your interpretation and like why be, uh, being mad about it, it's not gonna assist anything. Yeah. So I just look at it as I get like, mad for you. I'll see people come out with it, I'm like, what? That's I just, Mark, don't you know Mark? Mark's the, the most lovable guy in the world. And I feel yeah. bad. I just I just view it as a, 
I came up with a good product, came up with a good idea, and so of course other people are gonna take it and, and wanna enjoy the success of it as well. Yeah. Over here we got knee sleeves. We make a lot of different types of knee sleeves. Is this your newest one? The X sleeve is, yeah, one of our newer ones. It also has some grip in it too as well. Oh, nice. So it catches, oh, like it catches the knee. Yeah. And it kind of stays put because sometimes some, the, the, the knee sleeve might slide down, especially if you have kind of bigger quads. Yeah. We make uh, just different colors, ways, red, camo, blue, black. Uh, and then there's just different types of knee and elbow sleeves. These are like not as stiff. These are a lot looser. We call it a sport sleeve. And then for power lifters, they like having the thicker sleeves that are gonna actually assist them. Yeah, as much lift bound as possible. Yeah, and to lift more weight, basically. Um, so like you have all these office spaces here. How do you utilize oh. all of these and what's the purpose for all of them? Well, here, let's, let's, let's play it out. Go ahead and sit in that chair over there. Okay. All right. Come in. You're fucking fired. You are a piece of shit. Get the fuck out of here. Don't I say you're fired? I'm on this side. Oh. Let me you're try fired. It. You're a piece of shit. Get out of <laughs> I'll, here. I'll, I'll try it again. Take two. Come in. You need me for something? Yes. Can you do all my work for me? I'm gonna leave. All right. That department there is uh, our apparel. And so we have uh, my sister-in-law, actually, April. She does uh, our apparel. The next office over is our boy Smokey. The next office over is uh, Jessica Smith. This is our conference room. And uh, we have meetings there every once in a while where we'll bring in the whole team. Sometimes we might have kind of more department meetings, like the media will meet up in there. Well, this is my office here. Might as well make a pit stop in here for a second. Um, my, my wife mainly uses this office, so I'm not in here all the time. I do have a hat that I think you would enjoy. This is this is amazing, especially, especially since you're in LA. What? Look okay. at that. So uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan of like of gas station hats. Like that is the that is the worst. My brother <laughs> bought me that. That's you got a, this at the gas station? Yeah. That's the worst hat I think I've ever seen. These are some of the trademarks that we have. There's kind of a lot more than just what's here, but these are most of them. I actually did trademark Jackson Tan. Oh, cool. And then uh, up here, we got um, three, those are three United States patents. Wow. Slingshot. And, and you sleeves. only get those if you actually invented something, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those took a long ass time to, to get. Nice hat, dude. Thank you. Let's go check out the gym. Look at this guy's nipples. Yeah, who's that guy? I don't know. This is Super Training Gym. This is a lifetime, lifetime a dream of mine to have not just a gym, but to also have a gym and with a warehouse and offices and all the other stuff I'm gonna show you guys in a little bit. So, so how did you design the layout of this gym? Because I know you don't, yeah. um, it's not necessarily to like service members. Mm -hmm. It's more just like to have almost every piece of training equipment possible. Mm -hmm. But what's the thought process in laying all this out? There wasn't really anything too crazy about it, just to try to have it, I guess, organized in a way that you can train efficiently but yeah we got some dumbbells got some mirrors over here got some dumbbell accessory type stuff over that way and then we have some mma style stuff you want to hit the heavy bag hit the speed bag type that's thing. uh and sema's idea huh <laughs> pretty much <laughs> uh and then we just have you know just a shit ton of equipment that you would kind of see in some other gyms we have about six or seven pieces coming in uh for a little bit more bodybuilding style stuff but yeah the uh the turf and things like that are just uh I don't know, just to do stuff that's not so boring, you know, just like walking on a treadmill or just doing regular cardio is kind of a pain in the ass. So we drag the sled up and down. Uh, sometimes we'll do drills there, depending on the person or depending on the athlete. But even though the gym is free, we don't have that many people that are here. Um, we probably in a given week have like about maybe 50 people that come through. And it's mainly just like team members, people that are either part of Slingshot or people that are uh, part of our powerlifting group slash team. And uh, it's the gym is set up to shoot, really. The gym is, is designed and set up so that we can film more so than anything else. Yeah, it's really inspiring to see what you've done with not just the gym and the compound, because this is, I think, the third super training I've been mm -hmm. to. And each time it's like you just outdo the last one and it's just growing at such an exponential pace. It's so awesome. 
yeah, just always trying to make things better, you know, figure yeah. out ways to make things better. Just like any other good powerlifting gym, you know, one of the key components to it is to have a lot of different barbells. So we have just a shit ton of different barbells. We got, you know, anything you can think of to help get you stronger, we're just in favor of. And we just, I've just over the years have acquired it. Cause I'm like, hey shit, if that helps, then I'm gonna grab it. You know, I'm gonna get it. Yeah, I think your gym is the only place I've ever seen. This is called a Mastodon bar. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. How many, like, cause like what people see is you have the normal power bar, that's 45 pounds. Mm -hmm. Then you have a squat bar, which is 55 pounds. Um, this bar, <laughs> is how many pounds is it and then what is it made for? Yeah, it's 65 pounds and then it has a long- 65. Yeah, and it has an elongated sleeve and then the neuro on it's really tough and you can see how just freaking fat the bar is. Is this for like to load 800, 900,000 pounds? Yeah, it's for people that, yeah. <laughs> you know, years ago I, when I competed in powerlifting, uh, people wore powerlifting equipment. They wore like squat suits and bench shirts and things like that. So that bar is specific for big, big squats, people squatting 1,000 pounds, 1,100 pounds, 1,200 pounds. And I think more recently, I think somebody's done like, I wanna say 1,300 pounds, wow. I think. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild. But you don't really need the bar anymore because people don't really lift that way anymore. The sport has changed quite a bit. People don't really lift with powerlifting gear as much anymore. So it's just kind of a, a dinosaur now. Uh, this guy over here, <clears throat> this is, uh, this is a product I made with Rogue Fitness. These and you, are called, sent, you sent us a pair of these too. Yeah. We still have them at the gym. Yeah, these are called wagon wheels. And it's just, you could see how much bigger it is than a... You see how much bigger it is than a regular plate, right? And that was just to... Uh, we were doing like block deadlifts and things like that every week and we would break the blocks and they would get all messed up and they kept moving as we were doing like repetitions and yeah. stuff. And so I had this idea or concept to do this. I communicated with Rogue Fitness. They didn't know what I was talking about. So I had someone local make it. And once I had somebody local make it, I contacted Rogue again and said, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> and they're like, oh, they're like that looks pretty badass." And then so they make it and they sell it now. I'll show you another invention that I made with Rogue Fitness. I won't be able to tell exactly what this is, but some people are probably familiar with it. Did you invent that? I did. Wow, I've seen so many people with that. Yeah. That's cool. This is a, like a mono lift attachment. Yeah. A mono lift is so you can walk a barbell out and- uh, Well, you even need to walk it out, right? Yeah. It's pretty much yeah, you, and the, the latches right, go away. You stand up and then the thing will go like that and yeah. it'll go away from you, basically. So yeah, people don't have to, Somebody doing a 600, 700 pound squat, they don't have to walk it backwards. Just when they stand up with it, the lever will uh, go away from them and then they can freely squat right there. All they have to do is lean back into the rack to get the weight back in there. I've seen a lot of people with home gyms really like this because mm -hmm. especially if you're benching and you want to get the best arch possible, yep. having the best arch almost always requires a lift off. But with this, you can get right underneath where the lift off would be. Yep. And then you get your good arch yeah, you just, and you unrack, it just, it just goes away. Just extend the elbows out just a pinch and yeah. you're boom, you're right there. Yeah, cause your benching position is here, but your unrack is here. So this is, I didn't know that you created that, that's awesome. Yeah, it's been, in terms of like, you know, making stuff with some other companies, like I mentioned earlier, making stuff with Reebok, making stuff with Rogue, it hasn't been difficult because I already invented stuff that was already doing well, so. Uh, anyone that's like looking to pair up with a company, it, it would be best if you had proof of concept yeah. of something else working somewhere else first, and then it would be a lot easier to then communicate with that bigger company to get something going. Let's go check out your studios. Yeah. Here is the podcast room. Do I turn this light on? It, it'll pop on. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is a podcast room. We've uh, done over 500 podcasts of this particular podcast. Uh, before that, I did about 400 podcasts. So we create a lot of content. You can see we got tons of different cameras here that we switch on and off from. My boy Andrew Zaragoza sits back there. And Seema's up here with me. And uh, we talk to guests from all different walks of life. There's just kind of more, there's some more storage shit in here. This guy's in here. Oh my God, it's Brian Shaw. Is that life size? Pretty much. 
Want to stand next to him? Yeah, how tall is he? I mean, he? he's a little, he's actually like a little taller than I think. But he's got you beat by at least an a inch. Foot. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the other studio that we're building out. So we're going to change our podcast room to being over here. And then this side, I think we'll probably have a little bit more of a casual setup. Maybe there's a couch, kind of a sit down interview type of thing. Um, but yeah, we're excited to, to get this rolling. This would probably be about another month or so. <clears throat> These are just a lot of just products that we went over over the years. It's just like buckets and buckets of stuff. You know, you try out different different patterns and different, <laughs> nice. different colorways and different. Uh, so a lot of these things probably didn't even make it to market. It's just like some testers of them, and like mm -hmm. R&D. Yeah, some of them did, some of them didn't. Um, some of them someone just used and probably just threw it in here. <laughs> right. Some of them were successful. Some of them not so much. Some of it's like some of my own old like powerlifting crap that's in there. In here is um, we have uh, uh, lifting belts. We have knee wraps, knee sleeves, wrist wraps, slingshots, hip circles. I mean, it's got all the products yeah. that I showed you guys in the store. It's all right here. Uh, all this started out with just my wife and I, you know, shipping uh, just a few orders every day, you know, from our garage, from our, from our garage, and then us kind of like messing that up. And our neighbor next door, they were literally across the way, and they could see into our garage, and they would see us. We have some of these packages and stuff. And my neighbor, I, I saw him at the mailbox one day, and he was like, "What are you guys? What are you guys doing? Like, what do you have?" And we, I said, "Oh, well, I have an invention. I created a product called the Slingshot, and uh, we're receiving and shipping from our garage. That's why you see us out there all the time." And he was like, "Oh," he's like, "Well, I do logistics." He's like, "So if you ever need any help," and I was like, "Well, we only do like five orders a day." I was like, "We'll never need you. <laughs> we'll never need your help," you know. And then it's just a couple months later uh, that. We're starting to sell 10, 20, 30. And then there's like buckets of stuff, you know, go, going out all the time. What's like a typical order amount a day now? Do you know? I don't even, you know, I don't, I keep myself, I'm not even really allowed in here, <laughs> in this warehouse part. Yeah. They keep me out of here pretty much. Uh, I stay out of the numbers. I don't gotcha. ever really look at them. Um, if something goes off real big, uh, I hear about it. But uh, anything that's uh, kind of more shifted, more towards the negative side, <laughs> I definitely don't know hardly anything about that. Yeah. The group is actually really good about like, they'll be talking about something and they usually just like kind of stop when I come around. Cause I, I never like to have that stuff sway me one way or the other. Even when things are going really well, I'd rather just not even know about that either. I, all I'm interested in is making the world a better place to lift and continuing to make, the way I'm gonna do that is to continue to make great products for people. Yeah. And so that's where my focus is. Anything that takes me off of that, just probably isn't great. So I try to just focus just in on that. That makes sense. That's awesome. Show you the rest of the spot. And there's Casey right there, my neighbor. Yes, sir. <laughs> and then right here, we make some shirts. We have some printing things over here. Obviously, I don't know how to do any of this stuff, but uh, this machine doesn't physically make shirts, but it can print just about anything on a shirt. Um, we don't always make shirts. Sometimes we outsource those. Uh, sometimes we'll grab that old school kind of uh, heat press yeah. type thing and just put someone's name on the back of a t-shirt. Just to, It could be a, a friend of ours or whatever and just stick their last name on the back of it. And then this over here, both these guys, these are some old school squat suits. Wow. Check that out. That's crazy. They're made out. Of, they're made out of like uh, canvas. Whoa. That's <laughs> insane. You're right. I feel like these belong in like a powerlifting museum, like a hall of fame. Yeah, yeah we need to make a museum. That's cool. Don't sniff the crotch of those. No, I won't. <laughs> and then this is. Uh, in here we have yet yeah, kind of another studio. And uh, we do a lot of filming in the gym and we, we film a lot of stuff in there. And uh, one thing, I, one aspect I wanted to try to bring to this was to be able to film stuff, uh, kind of like record it live, just like we do with the podcast. And I wanted to do like tutorials on like how to squat, how to bench, how to deadlift. 
And so ideally, when this is all done, we'll have cameras set up uh, that will that will work work well for that. Then over here, we're building a, a, a infinity wall type of deal for photo shoots and for videos. And uh, just trying to just, I don't know, just optimize stuff, optimize everything so that we can just continue to move more efficiently and be more effective. Thank you, Mark, for showing us your super cool compound. I always look at you as kind of like the trendsetter and pioneer of what's possible in the fitness business space. Thank I remember, you. I appreciate uh, that. Yeah, I remember even before opening uh, Barbell Brigade, I would watch your videos where uh, you would turn your hat sideways <laughs> and you would rap about whatever inspired you that mm -hmm. day, whatever lessons that you learned from fitness that you can apply to life. So seeing what's possible, having a free gym, having all kinds of inventions that help people, seeing almost like your own little like Warner Brothers or Paramount Pictures all put together is super inspiring and thank you for sharing it with me. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time, bye-bye. Perfect. Can we take you through the warehouse part a little bit too? Yeah.